Okay, everybody, it's Dana from Chick Flicks Video Marketing, and this is the latest episode of Girl Crush. Today, I am talking to the lovely Lisa Hetrick from Indigo Jade Art, and we are going to fire right in with question number one. All righty, let's do it. When was the moment you knew you found what you were supposed to do? Wow. Okay. So I think that I've had a lot of different seasons in my life where I have tried to figure out the moment of what I was supposed to do. But I'm going to go back about three years ago um, to this season, the season that I'm in right now, where I have realized what I'm supposed to do with the rest of my life. So um, it happened, it was sort of like a catalyst moment in business and it happened as a result of an ending business partnership. And I knew that I needed to take some time. I wanted to make a huge shift in my life towards more positivity and more light. And I wanted to create relationships in business and relationships with me and the work that I do in the world that did that, that created more positivity, that created light, that was more um, working with people who were trying to bring good things into the world. So it was an epiphany-like moment. Um, if you've ever gone through your life and you've been kind of I feel like we all have different seasons of our life and we kind of go on this little road, this little path, and then some little button or a little uh, bing goes off in our head or some little trial or tribulation happens and you finally wake up and say, that's not it. You know, that's totally not it. And I believe that your heart space is telling you that all the time. Like it's giving you, you're getting all these little pings from the universe and you just keep on trucking and you miss them. And then all of a sudden something happens and you hear it. And this time I walked right into that space. Good for you. And it was, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing journey ever since about, yeah, like three years now. So I'm, I'm on the right path now. <laughs> so. It's so great. It's so gratifying <laughs> when when you you find that proper path, right? That true path. The thing that makes you happy and brings light into your world every day. Yes. Right? Yeah. So yes. What is next question is what is a topic you wish people asked you about? And the context around this is, you know, when I encounter people and they know what I do, all they want to do is talk about video and social media, but there are other things. There are other layers to me. I am a large onion with many layers. <laughs> so ask me about something else. So what is, yeah. what is the topic you wish people asked you about? That's such a good question. A lot of people, um, it's funny because, because I'm an artist, a lot of people won't ask me, they'll ask me questions like, can you paint a picture of my dog or, you know, some strange things, but no one will ever, um, like make me something, you know, I make a lot of things like art and things and, and give them out into the world and no one will ever like ask me a, like questions about it. They just, take it and then they they don't make me anything because they're afraid that I'll judge it right so and it's like I always wish so I actually had gotten something from a friend recently I'm gonna share it okay. I always wish that people would just ask me hey you know like your first question like how how did you how did you get into this like when did you start? When did you know that creativity or that expressing yourself, doing some kind of craft or art was a thing? Because for me, it started very young, about seven years old. So, but nobody ever asked me. It's like, don't, don't ask the artist any questions. And I'm like, no, ask me everything, you know, and nobody asks me any questions. So I had a friend who recently gave me something and I, literally have one thing given to me and she made this for me 
Oh. It, it says, thank you for the inspiration. Love, Carla. And it's a wreath. And she, she made it based on paintings in my Instagram that she saw. And I was just like, nobody ever made us. It makes anything for me. And it was so exciting. But, um, and she's a good friend. And she asks, and me, asks me questions. But a lot of people won't. Like in my community or people that I know through my children, they're just like, your work is so beautiful, but nobody ever asks me, like, what is that process? Or what is, um, what does that mean to you? Because I always say craft your joy. And when I say craft your joy, it means a whole lot more than just um, crafting. It means creating a life with your hands that brings you joy. And that could be anything. You could be cooking, it could be anything the thing that brings you joy. And I always wish somebody would just ask me that question because it's just so much more than me using my talents to create a piece of art. There's so many more levels to it. Um, and oh, oh, and you've asked me the question, so now everybody knows. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah, I have to say that I have a deeper appreciation of the effort that goes into what you do because I, of what you post on Instagram, yeah. like the one with like, you know, to see, to see the work develop and emerge bit by bit, just for me, gives me a, a really deeper appreciation of just how complicated, well, maybe not for you, but it can be right. I mean, you have, you, when you do the stamps and it was the, was it a wreath that yeah. you were doing? Yeah. And like, holy like yeah. I just, my hat off to you because I don't have that kind of patience but you know what I just want to show people because I didn't show them before that um, Lisa makes these cards and it you draw the card every day this is oh, I'll show you. so this is this was today's card yes every okay. moment matters. So it's every moment matters and she has hand painted all of these and they're delightful and they're colorful. That's, that'll be tomorrow. Maybe I need to shuffle that back in the deck because I don't <laughs> want to know ahead of time. That <laughs> kind of ruins the surprise, right? Because yeah. that's how you use the cards. You yeah. pull up a card or pick it or count it out, whatever your mm -hmm. way is. And you, it comes with this, the deck of cards come with this little easel mm -hmm. that little the cards, yeah, and they come in the bag. And then it just, and it sits here by, beside my desk and I look at it every day, periodically throughout the day when I'm at my desk and it catches my eye. So it's a wonderful thing. And I will tell you all where you can go and get your own beautiful indigo jade art at the end of this interview. So anyways, I appreciate the process. Question number three, what do you wish you did better in your business? Oh, wow. That's so good. That's such a good question. I, um, I have gotten like extremely good at blocking my time for doing things, but I wish that, um, I wish that I didn't go down the Pinterest and Instagram rabbit hole so many. <laughs> but we all do it. We all do it. And then an hour later, you're like, holy smokes, I've gone down the rabbit hole. Where was I? So, you know, I try, <laughs> I've actually scheduled my rabbit hole time into my schedule. Oh, so, brilliant. Yeah. Now here's a half an hour. Go ahead and take it to do that. So I kind of wish sometimes when I do get diverted onto things, I can bring myself back because sometimes there are whole days that go like that. Like if I haven't scheduled something in or if there's a shift, I can't, I can't seem to get back. But I think that is, I've grown to give myself grace and accept that something is happening. I must be overloaded and I need to take a break. So those are, those are like, those, me wasting time things when I should just be getting going um, are the things I wish I would do better. But I also think I'm a little bit too hard on myself, way too hard on myself. Right. This year, my word was compassion and it was mainly at myself to be more compassionate with is, myself. 
Isn't that interesting? Like, I, I'm glad that you mentioned that because last year my word was disrupt. Oh. And my vision for the word was to disrupt in my industry. Mm -hmm. I didn't really end up going that way. I, most of the disruption happened within me and in my own life, which is interesting. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. I, think, I think you need a disruptive year. I would say that was like two years ago for me, but you, you need a disruptive year to shape and reshift. And this year, my it was about compassion because I knew I was going to make this shift in my business model that was going to be a little bit hard on the mindset. So I was like, give myself grace, give myself grace. I think as women business owners and women entrepreneurs, we are so hard on ourselves. Oh, yeah. Before nine o'clock, we're already working way more than most people do all day. All day day it's so it, true it is so so true and then by the end of the day you're like well, i didn't get this done instead of like hey but look at all this and look at this progress and you know it always takes somebody on the outside looking in to say hey like recently lisa it's not even been a year since you opened your online shop wow you know and you're like, what? It's not even been a year. You're like, I feel like I've been doing this forever. Yeah, you know? I feel like we work in dog years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So so, I think, yeah, compassion is like the big thing. Just keep what, is, what is one thing you wished you did better in your personal life? Oh, laundry. Just straight up laundry. Oh, holy smokes. Like doing oh, it or folding yeah, it and putting yeah. it away? Um, finding some joy in it. You know, some people talk about finding joy in doing the dishes and the laundry and stuff. And I just, I, I can't. I try. I look at <laughs> stuff as like, oh, if I'm in another room, it doesn't exist. You know? I, I finally found my joy in laundry. I let my boys do it. <laughs> yeah. That, that would be joyful. Yeah. They do their own laundry now, which is like, <gasps> Thank God. It has its own room. You know, you feel really great when you get it all done. Yep. But then there's more the next day and you're like, what? This is, this is very upsetting. And it's I've like never, house cleaning. Yeah. Yeah. I've never been able to get on top of it. It's yeah. the, and it's the, I know it sounds like a silly thing in your personal life, but it's, it's like an albatross. Yeah. Very it's distracting, very, right? Very distracting. Yes. Yep. Very distracting. What was the last great book you read? Ah, uh, uh, Present Over Perfect. Oh. It's not in here on my desk. I think I put it back by my nightstand. I don't know about your nightstand, but my nightstand has a bunch of books about this high sitting on the side <laughs> of it. So I'm always like grabbing one. Present Over Perfect. It was amazing. It was about um, choosing to do things in your day and in your life where you were present and in the moment over like the perfection of it. And so for me, it was a really good book, not only in my personal life, but to translate it into my business. Like being present, if, if this is what I'm working on today, being present in that moment, working on it and trying not to multitask out like all the other things while I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. And then the, um, the perfection part, put it out, just put it out. Like when we talk about that funnel and all these different things, well, this isn't straight. This isn't straight. This isn't straight. Well, let's just put it out. Let's get it out, you know, get it out and then work out the kinks if there are kinks, but most of the time there aren't kinks. So we're here to do things and give them as gifts to the world, you know, as creatives in this world. So it was a huge shift because sometimes you don't even get out of the gate on projects because you're so afraid of the outcome. So letting go of the outcome was a big part of this too interesting letting go of the outcome you do it you, you've put your mind your heart your soul your intentions into it you put it out in the world you let go of the outcome and it's it, interesting because i think i'm probably really opposite of that <laughs> right i just i and i'm a, 
I've been singing the same song for five years about roll out of bed, get on camera. Don't worry about the perfection and how you look. Yep. And when it comes to my marketing, I'm a spaghetti marketer. Do you know what that means? Mm -hmm. Right? So I throw, it's like I visually throw, I visualize the spaghetti throwing <laughs> for people who don't understand. It's like you throw spaghetti at the wall. Right. Some of it sticks. Some of it, some of it really slowly crawls <laughs> down the wall and some of it just goes on the floor. Right? Yep. That's how, that's my imperfect approach. And yeah. I'm comfortable I with like that. It. I like that. I think yeah. that is being present over perfect. It's like, but that works for you. But you don't get caught up in, oh, I'm not going to put this out because this, this I isn't dotted, this T isn't crossed, or this doesn't really look the way I want it. You know, you just get, you put it out there. You yeah. give your gifts of the spirit to the world. And just get it out there and that's that that was a huge catalyst for me two yeah two years ago when I uh, well a year ago when I opened up my shop my online art print shop I was just like I've been talking about this for 12 years what's the holdup huh. I don't know let's just yep. put it out there and then you know nurture it change it yes and go from there yep Absolutely. I think, I think that's the best advice I could give is just, if you have something, you have a passion, you want to get it out there, do it. Just do it. I Good. Mean, Good advice. It's awesome. So what is something everyone loves that you think is overrated? Oh, reality TV. The Kardashians, <laughs> the housewives thing. There must be like a gazillion housewife shows now, right? The thing is, it's like a train wreck. And I'll admit, I've had it on, and you're just like, you got this dumbfounded look on your face. You're yeah. watching it, and you're like, why can't I turn away, right? Yes. And I, I think it's totally overrated, totally overrated. It's not real life, people. And that stuff's all over social media, and that's just not how real people live. We just don't. <laughs> no, and also, like, there, it, <laughs> it's heavily edited, Oh yeah. And they know the camera's on all the time. Right. So, you know, they're making they make for good TV. That's the you, that's, yeah. You make stories for a living. You know how creative we can be in our editing. Um, you know, I make DIY videos. I know how many times it takes me to do something right and how I can cut that time out. That's what they're doing on TV, people. This yep. isn't cool. And yep. it, the re whole reality TV thing when it started in the, in the '90s with MTV, the Real World. The oh first, yeah, I forgot the about that reality one. TV show, right? Yeah. It's just like, oh my God, why would anybody want to watch somebody's day? And it never ended. <laughs> and look where we are now. <laughs> it's still, and you're just like, oh no, but it's here. Too funny. Yeah. Tell me something. Uh, tell me something that nobody else knows about you. Wow. Okay. Not a lot of people know this. Probably just a few people in my intimate family circle. But I used to be. I was a competitive athlete in um, uh, from about seven years old through college in basketball and softball. I played on a lot of club teams. I was like, you know, the state champion things. And in college, I had like the highest batting average of the entire state of Maryland. You know, stuff I don't remember, stuff that's not really important. <laughs> but, um, but I was a pretty heavy duty athlete. And I think the, the beautiful thing about those experiences that I had as a young girl and up through college is that it really kind of shaped me as a leader mm -hmm. and it shaped, it shaped because you have a lot of social interaction as a team member. Yep. You no, know, there's no I in team. Everybody goes down. If you're going down, everybody's going down. And I learned those lessons really young, like at seven. So I kind of, it's definitely been a huge, um, influence and the coaches that I've had the really strong mentors that I had through that process really strong influence over me in my career choices and paths 
in my corporate time on my own business as an entrepreneur. And I, um, you know, I have kids that play sports and I have a daughter that's kind of going down the same path and I'm not steering her away because there's a lot that you can learn from those team like experiences um, and having good communication skills. So it was good. Now probably couldn't run a mile. Huh. I'll walk one. <laughs> but yeah. Well, yeah. So I have one, one extra question. What are you working on now? You got something you can show us? Or what did you just finish? What did I just finish? I just finished, um, I have a canvas over there that's blank that I gotta, I gotta draw something on it. It's a commission, so it's a 16 by 30, it's on the floor. I just finished three, pro I just finished these yesterday. These three cards by projects yesterday that went up on my blog today um, to help, uh, promote this new product line that was designed by Gina Krupski. Um, that's the company that I work with to create my stamp line. Okay. Um, in the craft and hobby industry. I do have a new release. I wish I could show it to you, but I don't have the physical product yet. I do have a new release coming out at the end of March with um, Gina K Designs. So I've got that going on. I have new prints in the works. My big thing that's coming, and all your people are going to hear it, nobody's heard this yet, except for maybe Katie Krumitzos. Of course. <laughs> the, um, I am going to be launching a new um, shop, a downloadables, printables. Fantastic. Yeah. Printable um, DIY and paper crafting printables that coordinate with my stamp lines. Wow. Other things. So yeah, I've been working on that. So uh, those designs are in progress. So I'm hoping in the next two weeks, I'm going to launch that. That's exciting. Way to go. Yay. That's another thing that's been on my head for years and I'm finally like, getting it done. Excellent. Yeah. Well, Lisa, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. You can find Lisa's beautiful work, her prints, the cards, the canvases, the notebooks, the home decor, the stamps, everything can be found at indigojadeart.com. And I also highly encourage you to follow Lisa on Instagram because it's a wonderful feed with beautiful imagery, Great videos, they're really fast. I love that they're like super, they're super fast, but it's fully engaging. So I will post the link. Um, well, that will come up at the bottom of your screen in a second. And uh, thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me today and uh, sharing your answers to the questions. Thank you. Thanks so much, everyone. I've enjoyed this. Dana, you're the best. Oh, shucks. You are. You're the best.